The three of them move towards the nightstand, and Scrooge cries out, No more! No more! As the spirit directs to Scrooge's attention to the image of the three thieves standing poised over the silver bell, Scrooge is burst out of the house, clad only in his nightshirt. I cannot. I cannot. This room is too like a cheerless place that is familiar. I won't see it. Let us go from here anyway. Well, we're looking at characterization in particular, and this text is rich with characters. And students often struggle with this idea of compare and contrast. And so I like to continue to go back to the characters and how they're seen, what they say, um, what they do, how they're treated in each of the scenes, and how that compares. Think about what kind of person you have to be to make someone want to steal the clothes off your dead body. You had to be like the worst person ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Joey? You wouldn't be kind to them and like not give them anything that could like give them a bonus and help them out. Cause think about it, they're not like him. They don't have all of his like privileges. Mm -hmm. That's a good start. Working on character traits, analyzing the text, and looking at the things that aren't being said looking at the, the actions that aren't being done, but the, the reading between the lines, the inferences are really where it's at for them. So this is kind of my Charles Dickens A Christmas Carol pop-up room. Um, I do want to thank so many people who helped me, donated Christmas trees, lights, Coach B, uh, Rebecca Gunderson, um, my husband even, we'll get to that. But starting here, um, oh, and Aaron Baynard who donated tons of lights for me. Uh, we have Bob Cratchit's desk with some of the things that he says characteristically. Um, we have, you know, of course the candle holder, some lights, Christmas lights to still make it festive. But in contrast, we have the super nice big desk with big piles of money on it, which is Ebenezer Scrooge's desk. It's a, very easy to, to compare and contrast these two characters and their different circumstances. I put some of the... Um, the phrases that he said in the beginning of the text, because as we are comparing his transformation, I'm going to also include some of the things he says at the end, so students can really get this visual of beginning and end on Ebenezer Scrooge. Um, comparing and contrasting is sometimes they, they're grasping. Uh, we have a little bit leading up to our graveyard scene with Marley's chains, kind of a spooky effect. And at the end is something my husband handmade. This is one of a kind. How do you make a piece of literature that was written over 150 years ago relevant and interesting to seventh grade students in 2022? A Christmas Carol is something that they've seen in pop culture. And just like um, a few months ago, we read The Telltale Heart. And then, of course, we had to check out the short Simpsons episode because everybody had seen that. Um, you know, and just like everybody, I, when I was kind of giving them an anticipation guide, uh, you know, getting them prepared for this, I asked how many students knew of A Christmas Carol, and I had a handful of kids in each class, very small, less than five in each class, who could tell me anything about The Christmas Carol. And then I asked them, well, who here knows something about Ebenezer Scrooge? And all of the hands pop up because they all have some connection, whether it's through Disney or they've heard about it. It's something's alluded to this origin story. Raise your hand if you've ever been in a situation where there's somebody you've ever disliked. Okay? Okay? Now, think about what that person would have to do to make you dislike them so much you can't wait to steal the cufflinks off of them, the pajamas off of them, the nightcap off of their dead body. Doesn't that seem extreme? <laughs> How does that compare? How does that compare with Scrooge's dislike for Christmas? One of the core competencies in the VVSD Portrait of a Learner is helping our students become empathetic citizens. I want to read you word for word a portion of it. Demonstrates personal, civic, social, local, and global responsibility through ethical and empathetic behaviors and choices. How does Scrooge's transformation demonstrate that to your students? A lot of students don't think that they can change. They think you are who you are. And so seeing that there is change, there's room for improvement, 
uh, even setting students up, it's confidence building personally, but also it, that empathy piece is understanding that just because a friend has a bad day doesn't mean they're a bad person. Um, I, I appreciated that all of my students said that they, they didn't think that they would ever pick, um, pickpocket a dead corpse. <laughs> that it would never get that far, that they would hate somebody so much. So they already have an ethical line that I'm pretty proud of. But, um, you know, tying into that empathetic students, uh, the charity of the holiday spirit. This kind of goes for, like, everybody. Like, it kind of shows time is limited. Because, like, you never know. And, like, one day you could be, like, upset at your parents. Like, you may be mad at them because they didn't do this or didn't do that. And because you never know, the next day they could be gone. And then, like, you kind of, like, take it for granted. And I feel like that's what happened with screws, too.